Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters, and today we're going to be keeping with our World War I theme that we've been doing lately, and we're going to be building the brand new kit from Tacom, the 135th scale British Mark I female tank. Uh, looks like a real nice one, so let's get started on that. Now, actually, before we do, I've had a lot, a lot of requests over the last couple of months, and all my new subscribers, and a lot of people asking about whether or not I have an online store, since I do have the hobby store itself. So I've decided to open up an online store, and that's what I've been doing for about the last week, and that's why there hasn't been a kit out up until now. Uh, it's at andyshobbyheadquarters.com. I've started putting a couple hundred items on it right now, and it is open for business. Uh, I'll be adding new stuff all the time to it, but I thought I'd take a break and build a model for you guys. So if you get a chance, please check it out. I'd appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs>
Okay, after we've put all the, the little pieces on right here, I've gone over all the seams again with another coat of the liquid glue. And this is going to strengthen up everything in case we missed any little spots. There is a lot of little pieces and a lot of intricacy to it, but it actually fit together really well and no fit problems. Just a little tough getting some of the little areas to line up just right, but once you do, they pop right into place. Okay, now I'm going to start the wheel assembly, and rather than make you watch all of that, I'll just kind of go over basically. This is just half of the wheels for one side, the uh, the B-type wheel. The wheels are actually going to go together just like this, and, and then you put in like this. Now I have a little more cleanup to do on this, and actually a lot of cleanup to do on all the other ones, but you get a general idea what it's going to look like. So there are 16 of these wheels I have to make for this side and 11 of the smaller wheels. So I'm going to get to work on cleaning up all those pieces and getting those on. Okay, now I've got all the uh, road wheels all built up right here in the two different piles. And now it's just a matter of following the diagram up above and getting them all back into place. Let's do that. Okay, I was able to get all the wheels in, and that is a really, really tough process. Uh, some things to look out for is because once you get all the wheels in here, they say don't glue them in, but what happens is they're moving and bouncing all over the place, and then you also have to line up the other peg on this side as well. So what I ended up doing is I just went ahead and glued the first row onto the bottom of the, uh, the sponson, and let that dry for a little bit, came back, and then slowly put it together and you're gonna have to use like your knife to poke it in there because even with the glue on those they aren't hundred percent lined up and you can knock them into the right place and after a little finagling here and there you can get the whole thing to lock in once it locks in it fit really well it's just just because of all the road wheels that British tanks have from World War one just a lot a lot of work so now I'm actually going to start the other side. I won't videotape that because it's going to be the exact mirror image of this. And we'll come back when we do the outer sponsors with the machine guns. I decided to take that apart and take it and glue each side on individually. It seems to be real fragile and want to flex too much this way. It's going to all line up a lot better. So now when we put the second half on, it too will foot right into its little crack right in here. And then we can actually just go ahead and place the machine gun in after we get all this part lined up. It seems like a little bit easier than trying to build the first part and then sliding the second part in. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is probably the nicest thing about this kit are the individual tracks. Uh, they come in a bag like this, already pre-cut out, and all you have to do is snap them together and they're completely workable once they do that. And what's even nicer is that you can actually get an entire run of these together and they actually stay together like they're supposed to. So there's 90 tracks on each side. And this is just going to be a test fit because we're going to paint the tracks, of course, later. Take the 90, look how they stay together, and the actual pad is going to line up perfectly. I'm actually very, very impressed with that. Okay, this is the next part that we're going to build the outer sponson 
with the machine guns completing it. Looks like there's a lot of little multifaceted pieces here we're going to have to mess with. So let's see how it comes out. That's one down, that didn't fit too bad. This side has the door on it. Actually, let's put it on here. And a quick note too, when you're working on a model using extra thin cement or any type of liquid cement for that matter, if you ever notice that a little bit of extra gets on little areas right here and it makes the plastic shiny, the one thing you want to be careful of is not to touch that area. If you let it dry, it'll dry completely flat and you can paint right over it and you'll never notice it was there. But if you do touch that area, you're going to put a fingerprint into it. So just be careful of that. Sometimes you'll see some shiny spots on the model that I'm working on and it's just a little excess liquid glue and as long as you don't touch it, it won't, won't damage anything. Now let's try to get this side on. kind of surprised they didn't just somehow mold this as one or two pieces rather than make us go through all this really tiny little work on all these things that can be a little difficult sometimes if not almost impossible sometimes <laughs> trying to film it at the same time. That's one thing I've noticed on this model too. It's, it's not ne necessarily a negative thing. This model requires a little extra glue for it to set off. Usually to me a glue sets off pretty easily on the first stroke on it, but this one's requiring just a little bit extra on it. Just, it's just something I'd point out to you. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. We'll be right back. Sometimes I don't always let the parts dry a lot and the reason we don't do that is because sometimes when you're using these multifaceted pieces that if you let the part beforehand dry too much there's no give on it and if it's slightly out of whack you'll get a model that will you'll have you have to break the part to get it to fit or it'll have a odd shape to it so with it still being somewhat soft you can see that we can get a nice crisp line right in there and now we just got that last little piece to put on and we should be ready to go okay this next part looks kind of interesting the way they've molded it this looks like this is the top and you're just gonna pop that piece right into there Looks like it lines up pretty nice. Oops, sorry about that. Looks like it lines up pretty nicely. Let's get the other two pieces on there now. I 
that one goes on this side. talking about when the glue is slightly still wet you can manipulate it enough to get the joints to line up pretty well and I'm gonna put the last one in and then we'll put the roof actually I'll put the last one in and then show you how the roof goes on as well of the piece put a little glue on in there and we're gonna feed this from the back sure it looks pretty decent there and I'm just gonna drop this in here for now because I'm, I'm gonna give it a few seconds for that to dry so I don't tweak it at all but give you an idea of what the sponson is gonna look like Okay, I'm going to attach the machine gun outer sponson to the to the part with the wheels here. One thing I'm going to point out to you that I was just trying to dry fit it here. I had to, you're going to have to, I think, in all of these, on this little area, this rivet and this rivet right here, I had to, even though it's on the bottom, I had to sand it completely off or it would not fit because of this little little piece of metal that would normally stick out right here. That rivet gets in its way and with that there, there's no way to get the piece to line up so with that on there though this will just pop right in afterward and I'll put some glue on that and you can see how hopefully right there that that rivet would have been right in the way odd shape with where they put it but just a little sanding and it'll work perfectly okay as you can see the uh, piece fit on pretty well I probably put a little Vallejo putty around this head right here maybe Maybe not. I might be able to actually push it in a little bit tighter, although it does look pretty good. Uh, a lot, a lot of work to that sponson. I think it does look pretty good after all said and done. So let's get going on the other side now. I have all the uh, sub-assemblies here and ready to put the final construction together. One thing I'm going to point out is there are some flaps right here 
that originally the instructions tell you to actually glue into place right here. I found that if you actually attach them to the sponson right here on the side, that it's going to make it a whole lot easier to plug in and not try to line it up. Whereas this is already solid and it's not going to move at all. So uh, let's start putting all these pieces together. Pretty good, how you doing today? Okay, now that we have the left side on, we want to go ahead and install the back wheels here. Being careful not to knock any of this stuff off, and then it'll just mount right inside of that. And then we'll glue the other side on. I'm painting the entire model, uh, the tracks and all, a NATO black color, and that's going to give our shadow coat before we actually put our regular paint job on. Now we're going to paint the uh, the actual color of the model. I used a mixture of 60% um, XF57 and 40% XF52 flat earth and I made a World War I type brown that I mixed up enough of it so I have for future purposes as well. So let's put that on and see how it comes out. Okay, we finish up the model right here, and I was very, very impressed with the quality of this kit. Uh, went together really, really well. The tracks are incredible. I can't, I can't stop talking enough about them. The fact that you can put 90 links together, snap them all together, and they actually stay together during painting, during trying to wrap it around the entire hull here. Normally, you have them splitting and cracking like on other companies. This one went together, stayed together the entire time. One thing I'll point out to you when you're building this kit is you want to use the liquid cement and not allow it to completely dry when you're doing this outer sponson in here. The reason you want to do that is if one of the facets is slightly off, when you go to put the next piece on, it won't line up completely. So this way if you leave them slightly soft, 
the pieces will fit together much better and you can actually kind of tweak it as you go. The photo etch screens went together beautifully. Now you'll notice I didn't do any weathering or beating it up at all. I actually plan on doing a diorama. I had so much fun doing that little whippet diorama that I thought I'm going to do a much bigger one. Put some figures on it, maybe a little trench scene, and with something with this, and maybe even the whippet too, both together. So when it comes time to actually weathering it, I want it to match the terrain and stuff that'll be in the diorama. Also, I'll point out, I do have this kit available at andyshobbyheadquarters.com, the new website, if you want to take a look at it there. I appreciate you watching the videos, and stay tuned because we have more coming. Thanks.